Today I'll show how to install e-running boards by Go Rhino on this 2018 Jeep Wrangler. The instructions show everything that comes in the kit. And here's what it looks like. The motors are shipped in the contracted position. Hardware, lights, wiring, and the running boards. I'll put a list of all the tools needed in the description. First, I disconnected the battery. The first thing to do is remove the factory running boards. Underneath, I need to remove all these 10 millimeter nuts on the inside of the pinch seam. And there's a total of six on each side of this four door. Now remove the 13 millimeter bolts on these three brackets. I need to drill a new hole right here. And the center of the new hole needs to be 4.29 inches from the center of this existing hole. The instructions show the new hole being 4.29 inches from the edge of the existing hole, but that's actually incorrect. Center to center is correct. And I'm gonna give it some taps with a punch. And now drill with a 21 64 inch bit. Now I'm gonna spray the bare metal with some self etching primer and that will help prevent it from rusting. I'll put a link to this in the description. As well as any other special tools needed for this install. While the primer dries, I need to move up front and modify this second hole by drilling it out to 21 64 inch. And spray this one with the etching primer as well, so it doesn't rust. Here we have one of the rear mounting brackets. It's going to mount up on the underside of the vehicle. They're the same for both sides. And I'm using this shorter bolt with the smaller washer. So it fits inside this recessed area. Underneath, there's a factory hole in front of the rear body mount and the bracket threads in like this. Just finger tight for now. Next, I'll install the rear left motor. I'm using two of the short 20 millimeter bolts for this and lock washers and the big washers. Grab the bolt and slide on the lock washer and then the big washer. And then line the threaded holes on the motor up behind the holes in the pinch seam. Red one in, just barely finger tight for now. And then do the same on the other hole, the one I drilled. Get these a little more finger tight, good. Now I have the longest 35 millimeter bolt with a lock washer and a big washer. And it mounts underneath to attach the motor to the bracket. It goes through the slot here and into this thread hole on the bracket. And just finger tight is good for right now. These are about as tight as I can get them for now with just my fingers. I'll have to wait until the motors are in the extended position to fully tighten them down. Next is the front motor. Here is the front left motor and it mounts like this. And I'm using the same 20 millimeter bolts, lock washer and big washer like I did on the rear motor. And that's about finger tight. Now I'm slugging them down tight with a ratchet. About 25 foot pounds. And same for the rear. Now I can't even install the long 35 millimeter bolt into the underside of the front motor because the motors weren't shipped in the extended position like it shows in the uh, installation instructions. There's not even room to thread it by hand. So I'll have to install this bolt after I get power to the motor. So I'll also have to wait to install this 
protective cover since it covers the front motor and that bolt. The cover bolts to this threaded plate that slips inside this hole in the frame with this huge bolt. Then it mounts like this. But I'll do all that later now since I can't install this 35 millimeter bolt on the underside of the front motor yet. Over on the passenger side, I installed the right front and the right rear using the same steps as I did on the driver's side. But there's one extra step, the controller bracket. The plugs face toward the back and it uses these two existing holes here in the middle. No need to enlarge them or anything. And then tighten them down to 18 foot pounds. So one more slight error in the instructions that might throw someone for a loop. For the passenger side, they say both motors should point toward the rear tires, which they do. So I'm good there. However, over on the driver's side, they say both motors should point inwards. Well, the front is correct, but the rear points toward the rear tire just like on the passenger side. I double checked all the motors and this is the only way they can go. Right, Kitty? Next, I need the M6 by 25 hex screws and I need a five millimeter Allen socket to tighten these. And on the back of the running board, I have these two brackets that slide. Put one down here and the other down here about where I have the two motors. And with it set in place and the slotting brackets lined up over the motors, nice and flush like this. Get one screw started by hand and let's go up front. Make sure it's flush. No space between the running board and the motor. The slotting bracket actually fits inside the recessed mounting area on the end of the motor. Get a screw in there, hand tight so nothing moves around. Then install the other screw and tighten them down to nine foot pounds. And do the same on the rear. Now it's time to run some wire. I started by plugging the wiring harness into the controller. Each section of the harness was labeled for the motor it should connect to. So it was as simple as routing the wires to the right front and right rear. And the left will go to the driver's side. Next, I have a panel popper tool and I'll use this to remove these plastic trim clips. This will usually remove them without any damage. I'll have a link for this trim tool in the description. Just make sure not to pry against a painted surface or it will scratch. Move the seat forward and remove the lower B pillar trim cover. Then roll this carpet back out of the way and pull out this rubber drain plug. And I need to drill a hole through this plug using a 7 16 inch drill bit. These are the wires that need to run inside the vehicle. And if I run these up over the frame and feel around, eventually I'll be able to pull them through this drain hole. So I taped this together here and I taped the end to make it easier to run inside. and pull the whole thing through the hole. The loom too, until there's no more slack. Then grab the plug, pull the wires through, and it should be a pretty tight fit when it gets to the wiring loom. Lube it up with some drool. It's still really tight, but that's good. There won't be any leaks. And I'm pushing the plug as far down close to the floor as I can reach. 
and then push the rubber plug back into the hole in the floor. So here's how it looks. Here are the sensors. There's one harness like this for each side. And I need to plug this in right here to this brown wire. The white wire is for the driver's side sensors. And the black wires are for the override switch. There's this painted body bolt right behind the seat belt assembly. Loosen it some, and the ground for the sensor harness will go behind it. Next, I have a sensor for the rear door jam and a sensor for the front door jam. I'm measuring down one and a half inches from the door striker. For the sensor wire, I don't want it to interfere with the seat belt. So I'm running it down under and the sensor will mount right about here. But first, I need some rubbing alcohol to clean the surface. It's had a minute to dry. Now I can peel this off and stick it on. And on the rear door jam, I'm installing the sensor about one inch below the bottom edge of the door hinge bracket. Go Rhino gives me plenty of extra wire to work with. Now I need to run these over to the driver's side. I'm running it under the passenger seat here and tucking it under the edge of the center console and same around this side ignore the black for now uh, the white goes under the carpet and comes out over here beneath the driver's seat and i've mounted the sensor same steps as on the other side plug in the sensor harness to the white wire i'll tuck all this away later after i make sure it works under the seatbelt assembly, so nothing interferes with the belt. And the harness is grounded to the same body bolt on this side. These two black wires, I'll run under the console up front. And I just have them sitting here for now until I make sure everything is working and I figure out where to mount the switch. Now, back on the passenger side, and I need to run the positive and negative wires up to the battery. And I just ran it up over the frame here. It's pretty hard to see anything. Now I'm on the inside of the frame and you can see it goes up inside the fender, behind the fender liner. There you can see it. And from there, it goes into the engine bay and it'll connect to the battery right here. But first I need to connect everything. I connected all four motors. Then I removed the end line fuses and connected the positive and negative wires to the battery terminals. I'll install the fuses later when everything is ready to go. I'm cleaning the door where I'll mount the magnet. I already put the sensor on the door jam. So when the sensor detects the magnet moving away, that's when the motors extend. So it's important to make sure the magnet is lined up with the sensor when it's installed on the door. So I can see that's good right there. The rear doors get this thicker, stronger magnet. I'm gonna make sure these work here before I stick them on using the double-sided tape. Right now the magnet is just stuck to the metal door. Now I'll do the same on the driver's side rear door. Then the driver's side front door. Now I'll be able to lower the motors to install the rest of the hardware. Before I put those inline fuses back in, let's turn the override switch to the off position and install these 20 amp fuses. Okay, and it works. Off, on, works perfect. Now I can install those parts from earlier. I thought they would extend a little farther. They're not perfectly flat, but maybe the rest of the hardware will help that. Starting with the front left motor, fully extended, I now have access to this bolt hole. All right, this long bolt is tightened all the way down. 
and so is this one under the rear motor. And this bolt as well for the bracket. Now I can install this protective bracket. But first, I need to install this threaded plate. It slides in the frame hole like this. Then I can reach in this big hole here and get it centered. Like that. Now the bracket goes in place like this. Make sure the harness isn't pinched. And first comes the big washer, then the lock washer, and then the 18 millimeter bolt. And then gently thread it into the plate. If I push up on the plate with any kind of force, it'll just push the plate out of the way. Once it's started in the threads, I don't have to be so careful. Just get it finger tight for now. And I'll stunk it down with an impact. That's on the lowest setting, by the way. Uh, 25 uh, foot pounds is what the manual says. Now I can install the same bracket onto the passenger side and tighten down those rear bolts as well. Now that the motors are working, I can get these magnets fine-tuned. So that means this one needs adjusted. Let's try moving it farther out here. There it is. So that's where I need to stick it. The backing peels off like this. And it's mounted. And the back door magnets lined up and mounted onto the driver's side. This one's giving me some trouble. I stacked a few pieces of double-sided tape under it to bring it out closer to the sensor. And it's still not working. But when I just held the magnet up to the sensor, it worked fine. I later found out that this Jeep was hit pretty hard on the left rear door area in an accident. And although the repair job looks great, the tolerance must be off a little bit where the door meets the door jam. So I just added a couple more layers of double-sided tape to bring the magnet closer to the sensor. And now it's working. And the kit comes with plenty of zip ties to get all of the wiring secured. Now I'm plugging in all of the LED lights and these are color coded. Just make sure these little arrows are lined up. So if when you open the driver's side doors, the LED lights don't come on, but instead the passenger lights come on and opening up the passenger doors makes the driver's side lights come on. You might need to swap these two plugs coming off of the controller. Yep, I had black to red and red to black. It should be red to red and black to black. Easy fix. Both sides are good now. Now I mount the LED light here on the rocker panel. A little more toward the middle of the door. I have an alcohol pad here again. I'm using the zip ties to secure the wires and mounted the lights the same way on the driver's side and secured the wires with the zip ties to tuck them up out of the way from any moving parts. Here's how I secured all the wiring. Zip tied all that together. Always went over the body mounts. Zip tied all the way around the frame here. Then for the LED light, I just used another zip tie on the main wiring loom. I used the factory holes in the frame where I could. Other times I went all the way around the frame and underneath, the wiring harness runs over on top of the cross member and I have zip ties on there to hold it in place. And on the driver's side, I just use these rectangle body holes. Again, go over the body mounts and then more zip ties around the frame. Going up to the engine bay behind this 
splash shield. I zip tied the harness to this uh, factory insulated line here. And the end of the harness, I zip tied right here. Inside, I zip tied these to the factory harness to keep them away from the seat belt. Tucked everything up under the center console. The plastic trim goes back on and just covers up the wires for the door sensors like this. And I'm done. The Go Rhino instructions say estimated installation time is three to five hours. I think that's a little optimistic for someone who hasn't installed one of these before. So give yourself some extra time. I'll put a list of the tools needed in the description. Thanks for watching.